Welcome to this second part uh, of this three-part series. So if you recall, in the first part, what we did was we wrote a simple application uh, that periodically reads a uh, news feed from the BBC football website and then it saves the data uh, on, into a Mongo uh, database. So in, in, in this part two, what we are going to do is this. After saving the data, we are going to expose the data as restful resources, and we will allow um, we, will, we will allow uh, application uh, using REST to to retrieve uh, those news feed that we have saved. So a typical example would be something like this, where we use the HTTP uh, call our application, uh, s saying that you know uh, it wants the ten uh, ten news item. Okay, so let's go about uh, let so let's see how we go about writing this application. So, if you uh, so this is the previous uh, application uh, from part one that we've written. So this is the, uh, the 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 MongoDB, and this is the feeder which uh, which runs uh, every which runs every three hundred seconds. And what it does is that it reads the BBC football website and it saves it onto Mon onto MongoDB. So, what what we're going to down what we are going to do now is this: we are going to create a JAX-RS uh, resource. So the first thing we to do is to create a, a an application config. So every JAX-RS requires us to specify a root uh, root resource. So we will just create a class, just call it REST config, and I'm going to put it into the uh, the REST package. Okay. So all we need is this: we're going to say uh, application path. Okay, that. So let's call it API. So this will be our root resource uh, into all uh, uh, into all our RESTful uh, resources, and it has to extend application. So that okay. So this is all we need. Uh, we're not going to do anything else. So the next thing we're going to need is this. We're going to create a class, uh, our our REST class. So let's call this news item resource. I'm going to put it here. Okay. And I'm going to use I'm going to say this is a request request q r e request scope and the path okay, the path will be a uh, news item. Okay? And what we're going to handle is we're going to handle the get method and also we are going to produce we're going to produce uh, JSON. So we're going to say application JSON type. And what happens now is this: we're going to return a, a our response. Response. Let's call it a get, like that. Okay. So, so if you go back and look at our BBC, uh, uh, our MongoDB application. Uh, collection you will notice that uh, there are running uh, numbers for the IDs so what we would like to do is this we would like to allow the restful resources to, the the application who is using the restful resource to be able to specify a particular ID and also how uh, and also how much record it wants from that ID so let's say you know if it wants uh, from this record it wants five so we'll just retrieve five and and return uh, it to, to the caller so to do that, uh, we, the those parameters will be passed in as a query, uh, query string. So what we're going to do is this: we're going to say query parameter. So let's call the uh, object ID the uh, this as the as the OID. Okay, let's call this the OID, and it's going to be a string string called OID. Okay, and we can also specify a default value if uh, the query if this query param parameter is missing so we can say default value <coughs> like that and then we can say uh, we need to give it a 12 byte number so so if it so if the person didn't specify so let me see uh, I need 12 one so maybe oops let's start let's start again I need 12 one two three okay so Okay, so if the person didn't specify, if the request did not specify the QID, then we'll just start from zero. The second thing we'll probably need 
is this we are going to need uh, the batch size so query parameter batch size okay and int batch size so let's say the oops the, let's say the batch size the default again the default value for batch size if it, they did not specify is let's say 10 okay so we're going we're going to give them 10 so now what we need to do is this we need to retrieve the the uh the the information from the uh from mongo so to do that what we do is that we use the same class again we inject in the feed db as of last like just like we did the last time like that okay so now we go db collection collection okay then we go feed db get collection and the name of the collection is bbc so let's go back here oh sorry uh, not this this is the name of the collection bbc so once we have gotten once we have gotten that collection we can now say we can now uh, query it we can now query it by saying collection okay find find me a oops basic object find me an item okay find me the this key okay and the the criteria is okay the criteria is going to be is going to be greater than the object ID like that okay so find me from the collection BBC collection find me the uh, find, find me the uh, uh, all the records that are greater than this particular object ID which is passed in here and what find returns is find returns a cursor so we're gonna say DB cursor like that okay so once we have got the cursor we can now <coughs> We can now say uh, get iterator that returns a DB object. Okay, iterator. Okay, and then we can say while. Uh, okay, so let's say we want to return uh, like ten. So we can say in count equals to zero. So we can say while. Okay, while count is less. Then batch size and iter has snacks. Then what we're gonna do is this we're gonna go db uh, db object db object equals to iterator next. Okay. So let's print let's print let's not return the result first. Let's print let's print out first and see what, what we get. DBO dot to string. Okay. So what we we're just going to resp uh, f since we are not uh, why don't we test our application first so we're going to, just going to return a, a response to just say ok build okay. so let's try running this particular application and see what happens uh, this part and see what happens so we're going to clean and build and we are going to deploy our application Okay. so let's try running it with our um, with the restful rest client so this would be, I think, is HTTP. HTTP. Okay, HTTP. Localhost. Okay, there we go. So that's th that's the one. Okay. So response doesn't contain any data, and if we see, okay. So this is what the string returns. Okay. So now we know that it is working. So let's try another number. Seven. Send okay, so we so we can see that it's returning, it's actually working. So now what we want to do is this: we want to return uh, the JSON object. Okay, so so uh, uh, Jax, so to to return the result, JAX-RS doesn't actually directly support has got built-in support for DB object. So you can do what a few things: you can write a message body writer which will do the conversion for you, or you can just return it as a string and and say that it's a JSON object, or we can use the uh, uh, the 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 J 
JSON processing uh, API in Java EE uh, 7. So, okay, so what we're going to do now is this. We're going to use the JSON uh, uh, J JSON uh, a API in Java EE 7. So, first of all, what we're going to do is this. Since we are going to return a, a list of objects, uh, we're going to return an array of this JSON uh, JSON objects. So we're going to say JSON array builder JSON create array builder. Okay, and the next thing we, that we are going to do is this. Since since this string, the two string of this is is actually a valid uh, JSON JSON string. So we will just pass that and convert. We will just pass this and convert this into a JSON object. So we're going to do this. Oops. Uh, so to, so we're going to say JSON reader. Okay, JSON create reader. Okay, we're going to say new a byte array input stream. And then we're gonna say dbo to string get bytes. Okay. Now from the builder we can add uh, reader. Okay. Read the JSON object. Okay. So every time when we loop through, we get one of these uh, db object. We convert that into a stream of bytes and use the JSON reader to read uh, to convert it into a JSON object. And then what we now do is this: to return the response, we just say builder build like that. Okay. So let's try this. We're gonna clean and build, and then we're gonna redeploy the application. Okay. So make sure that it has deployed. Okay. So let's try our application again. So we're gonna get 20 now. 20 a cut from here. So let's see what happens. Okay, so oops, batch. Oh, batch size. Okay, so let's do that again. Batch size is 20. So now the result has come back. So this is what is exactly in our uh, in our MongoDB. So one of the things that we can actually make this application slightly uh, better, so let me undeploy this first, uh, make this slightly better, is to run all this in a separate thread, uh, so so as to increase the um, <coughs> the efficiency of the uh, of the application server. The reason is because you know someone may actually like say you know want to return a batch size of let's say a million, so uh, so then this request thread will be stuck with processing a million record, right? So what we want to do is this: we want to decouple the request uh, the request the the thread that handles the request from the actual processing. So in Java EE six. Uh, there is this concept of async servlet, and in Java EE7, uh, this uh, this notion of async servlet has also been introduced uh, into uh, into JAX-RS. And to do that, <coughs> what we need to do is this: we need to create a separate uh, task or 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 a runnable. So let me just go and go ahead and create a class first. So let's call this uh, process news item task. Okay, and this is going to implement runnable. Okay, and what we're going to do is this uh, to implement all abstract method. Okay. Okay, so we're going to need a few things. Okay, we're going to be we we're going to need a few things. First of all, we're going to copy all this. We're going to take all this thing and dump it in here. Okay. Alt Shift F. Okay, so let's pass all this in as a as a parameter. So private final fit db fit db. Okay, uh, and we got private final in batch size. Okay, private final string. ID, which is our object ID, and also lastly, we need one other thing, which is something called an async response. Okay, so how do we get async response? To uh, to put the uh, to to get a request uh, to get a JAX RS request to uh, into a uh, in 
into a sort sort of async processing mode, you need to inject in. You need to use a suspender and inject in an async response. Okay, so the async response, so the async response is just like the async context in the uh, in the uh, async servlet. So what it does is this: when you're finished processing, you just call it from async response. You call uh, resume pass passing the result. So we, so in our task, we also need the async response. So we can say private final async response see resp response okay so now we're going to create the uh, the constructor for that okay so now we have done all that so once we have finished okay uh, once we have finished you just go async response resume okay so resume with the object build uh, we're sorry with the result. Okay, so in here we don't have to return anything more. We can just say return void. Okay, so to run to to run the uh, the separate thread, what we need is we need a uh, we need a thread. So if you recall, uh, in our previous example, uh, we have we actually have created a thread pool called my my feed reader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this. here okay so when the request comes in I will say executor uh, submit new process item okay new process I oh, new process item Process item. Oops, I don't know what has happened. Okay. okay, let's try that. Must be a bug in that bin. Submit. Okay, new process. Uh, news item. <laughs> I've got no idea why. Maybe I haven't saved this. Let's try saving this. PROC process. News item. Task. And we are done, right? So the thing, so the request comes in. We create a runnable, uh, pass in all the relevant uh, parameters, and then dispatch it to the run. So when the run, it, it, we we perform the same th same function, and after that, uh, when we are done, we call resume to resume our request. So let's clean and build this, and let's see what happens. So we're going to deploy the application now. Okay. And we are going to rerun the application now to saying batch. We want now batches of 10. So now the response comes back as 10. Okay. So let's try our OID. So we're going to take this OID. And then I'm going to say, give me 10 now, beginning from this OID, or actually after this OID. So now we go run, and we get the following uh, 10. 10, uh, 10 news item. Okay, so that's the end of this uh, very short uh, uh, tu tutorial showing you how to use uh, JAX RS and also uh, and 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 also um, as async response, of which, which is a new feature in Java E7. So the next time we're going to write in an in the third part, what we're going to do is just we're going to we're going to write a a client that reads uh, that reads that uses Jax, Jax, uh, that uses rest full resources to read the news item uh, till then uh, I'll, I'll see you the next time thanks